Hello dear students, welcome to the Bajirao IS Academy. Today is 11th December and we are going to discuss the daily Hindu newspaper analysis. So in today's session, we have to discuss three important articles. Number one is related to ethics committee and the expulsion of the TMC leader Mahua Moitra from Lok Sabha. So we will discuss how it affects parliamentary democracy and what do you mean by parliamentary democracy we all are going to elaborate and further we will shift to the second article where there is a talk about air pollution we know that this is a concerning issue in india almost every city faces the crisis of air pollution but no solution only statements and political statements but when it comes to solution there is no solution at all further we will shift to the third article where we will understand India's future growth strategy. What should be India's future growth strategy in the world of deglobalization, in the world of disrupted supply chain? Okay. And here we need to understand what we mean by supply chain. Okay. And in the globalized world, the integration of countries, the products is very much necessary. And this integration is performed by supply chain okay so that if one nation produces one thing that should be delivered to the other nation via the supply chain it can be the communication it can be the transportation okay all of that so we will understand about all these issues okay and before that if you hadn't subscribed our channel please do subscribe like share and also try to promote with your friend circle so that they can also have a benefit of these discussion okay and you can get it the pdf of our lecture series from the telegram channel please do join the telegram channel as well the link has been given into the description box so let's start with our discussion first of all when we talk about first article okay you know that the tmc member of lok sabha mahua moitra was expelled from lok sabha membership okay and when we talk about this personality, she had charges for cash for query allegation. Although we already talked about what charge does cash for query allegation means. So we will not go into that detail. But for an overview, I want to tell you the basic understanding that the BJP member of Lok Sabha, he alleged against Mahua Moitra that uh, she takes cash for asking questions in the parliament and that affects the present government's credibility okay so this matter went to the Lok Sabha speaker okay and the Lok Sabha speaker sent this matter to the ethics committee of Lok Sabha okay and when the report came by the ethics committee of Lok Sabha so the ethics committee recommended that the member should be expelled okay and further that time the parliament was not in session okay so now the winter session started in the parliament and on 8th December the TMC member Mahua Moitra was expelled from the house so this is the common story behind all this cash for query allegation okay so i am not going much detail into the personality but i want to talk about the article that the expulsion is like against the parliamentary democracy so when we talk about parliamentary democracy you know that democracy means what the people choose their leaders okay so there can be a direct democracy and there can be indirect democracy so in direct democracy like people rules okay people are asked for making rules regulation all of that but in direct democracy what happens like we elect certain representative from our constituency okay and this sits in the Lok Sabha or the lower house okay and they decides on the legislative matters and also the government is the outcome from this parliament or the Lok Sabha okay so that is the parliamentary democracy so that means if a member gets expelled 
from a particular constituency let's say here this is mahua moitra okay so the constituency will be vacant okay so how the people will be represented here who will be the leader until and unless the by elections are there until and unless there is like fresh elections are there okay so that means the interest of the people of that constituency will not be fulfilled will be underrepresented okay so this article talks about that and now we are further shifting to the committee's recommendation so when we talk about committee's recommendation so the committee in its document observed that there was no proof of cash exchange okay first of all we should note this okay and also the report talked about that there should be a legal internship institutional and town bound investigation okay because these are ethics committee these are not like judicial committee or the judicial proceedings okay and in judicial proceeding you know that various rules regulations and the evidence are calculated gathered analyzed searched all of that but this is not in the case of ethics committee okay that's why this committee recommended the intensive institutional and time bound investigation okay but the investigation was not done and ultimately on december 8 okay the house like uh, expelled the membership of mahua moitra and also with the voice vote okay hope you understood this context okay and when we talk about like certain other allegations like uh, uh, like uh, see also share the details of their parliamentary account okay where the questions are putted and asked okay so this was also one of the allegation but as you understand that sharing the parliamentary accounts also does not specifically mentions that it will be against to any laws okay so this is the another issue hope you understood the detail and now we have concluded this article we are shifting to the next article okay so hope you understood so when we talk about second article it is related to air pollution and you know that if you are living in delhi okay the crisis of pollution is already understood visible observed okay so this is not like any rocket science you cannot understand but this is related to our real life okay you can observe you can understand this so when we talk about air pollution what do you mean by air pollution in basic terms so when the quality of air gets degraded okay and degrade at such level that these are harmful for our health these are harmful for our respiratory system okay because when you inhale the polluted air so that air goes into your body okay and that have the chances to affect your lungs okay and respiratory system so that becomes the genesis of different types of disease and also your productiveness gets affected and apart from your productivity there is other issue like in the children there can be the chances of the oxygen not reaching sufficiently into their uh, into their lungs okay and that can also affect their mental development because supply of oxygen and fresh oxygen is very much necessary for person's productivity for person's mental growth and development okay but in india we are not too much concerned about dealing with this cross pollution crisis and you can see the example here like this is the example of india gate and look at the visibility okay we are not able to see the india gate here as well so that is the issue but it remains unaddressed despite we have so many years of the issue coming into the news coming into the discussions debates all of that but no solution is here so whom do you think is responsible who is responsible in these type of scenario okay so we will elaborate that but let's understand about the cause of air pollution so when we talk about the cause of air pollution we have the vehicular emission okay along with industrial emissions we have lots of industries surrounding the city so they emit 
the particulate matter along with the chemicals all of that and apart from that we have the animal husbandry sector we have the agriculture sector how agriculture sector is related the stable burning okay like in case of delhi we see that the surrounding states in delhi like haryana punjab uttar pradesh okay so they are surrounded by agricultural fields and when there is a transition of the season so people or the farmers burns the prali or the agriculture residue and that leads to the particulate matter emission and that affects the surrounding delhi because in winter like these pollutants remain below the uh, like atmosphere okay that is nearer to the ground surface so that affects the health outcome okay so we have lots of repercussions one by one we will discuss but here we are discussing that why the issue of pollution remain unaddressed first of all you should understand that we have a lack of political will if the leadership shows activity the presence in dealing with these crises then definitely the pollution can be dealt with serious matter okay but when we talk about our plans and initiatives we do have a plan like national clean air plan okay we launched it to deal with the pollution to have a target that in the 102 most polluted city in the country we will reduce the level of pollution by at least 35 percent of the next coming years but when we talk about reviewing these schemes there is no improvement and only there are promises but these promises are not resolved okay and apart from that you can understand from a data like in 2019 a lancet study found that nearly 1.6 million death in india that represents about 18 percent of the total death so you can imagine the impact of the pollution on the death of the person it seems like people's well people's life is not getting valued here okay so these are not a good thing and apart from that we have also disease burden like the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and this burden is like 50 percent of all case in the world okay that are in india and apart from that we have the sthama which represents 13 percent of the global burden which is in india and that we can understand that the pollutants or the pollution or the air pollution they also reduce the life expectancy let's say if a person like uh, inhaling the fresh air so they can live let's say 70 years but when we talk about a person inhaling the polluted air they can only survive maybe these are based on the data and analysis okay 61 years to 60 years okay so that reduces the life expectancy and apart from that we have the economic loss economic loss in terms of like people's productivity gets affected and that gets reflected in the work okay and also the mental stress the physical stress the eye related effects because when the pollutants gets into our eye so the eye itching is there okay eye burning is there so these are the crises and they have lots of impact on the economy as well okay so what another thing that has not reformed the pollution is like paralysis of a scheme so we have lots of a scheme we will discuss about it in the coming slide but when it comes to the efficacy when it comes to the implementation of these schemes so these schemes are like not being implemented in hard and fast rule okay like we have the national clean air program which was launched in 2019 that talks about dealing with 131 most polluted city but still the quality of the air in this city is like hazardous we are exceeding world health organization air pollution safety standards of particulate meter 2.5 that should not exceed 5 microgram per meter cube but it is like triple times more than four times okay so already we are like uh, inhaling the toxic airs okay toxic gas so this scenario 
needs to be changed okay and apart from that for the benefit of the corporates okay we are like changing our environmental laws forest laws that promotes their interest not the interest of the public not the interest of the nature not the interest of the environment example like we have the great nicobar developmental program so in this developmental program the nicobar island okay which is a part of bigger andaman and nicobar island so here the deforestation will be going on okay and apart from that there will be like infrastructure development okay so this can cause the damage to the nature damage to the environment okay and apart from that we have the central vista project like the new parliament building okay so when this project was made so deforestation was occurred okay and apart from that lots of construction activity was getting so this also increased the particulate matters concentration okay so these are the issue and we need to handle it okay so there are certain practices which has been suggested in this article like we need to have a urgent proactive plan that should cater the need of our nation that cater the need of our city and apart from that the social forestry needs to be promoted the ecological audit of the project should happen okay and apart from that pollution indexing of the city and township so that we can understand we can analyze what the level of pollution in the city is there okay and how we can deal with that so that the scenario and when we talk about what are the initiatives taken by the government or the authority for controlling air pollution so we have the system of air quality and weathering forecasting and research that is the suffer portal tell me about basics of the suffer portal okay and apart from that we have the air quality index okay and graded response action plan for delhi okay and that was in news frequently because of the winter was approaching and the particulate matter was reaching a drastic level okay and also we have the bs6 vehicles we are promoting for that and also electric vehicles or even policy okay new commission for air quality management was instituted and subsidies given to the farmers for buying the turbo happy cedar machines so that they should not be dependent on the stable burning because the stable burning is one of the important factor for causing the damage to the delhi's air the quality of delhi's air okay so hope you understood this article as well as now we are shifting to the next tutorial it is related to the gs3 okay so when we talk about india's growth so india's growth is like a success story okay like when we compare with the past okay we were growing at the level of four percent five percent okay six percent now we are targeting seven percent we also reached eight percent as well in the past okay so the progress is visible and when we talk about the futures prediction it is also looking good like india's growth in 2023-24 by the rbi that is reserve bank of india they suggested that it will be seven percent okay and apart from that the international organization like international monetary fund and the world bank they also talked about india's growth at 6.3 percent now you will be assuming or observing that why and how the imf and world bank have the capability to predict these data okay so basically they acquired the data from the government websites okay sources and based on their methodology okay they try to calculate the growth rate of various nation okay because these are one of the responsibility of these international body okay so india's future growth strategy is dependent on what dependent on the globalization it needs to be changed it needs to be calibrated calibrated means we need to divert we need to shift okay why because the global world has uncertainty uncertainty in terms of the deglobalization okay we are moving towards deglobalization so how we are moving we will understand but tell me one thing what do you mean by globalization so globalization simply means the interconnectedness of different nations okay with one economy with the society okay 
whether it is in the form of exchange of products exchange of peoples for the knowledge for the jobs okay for the education all of that and apart from that this globalization has impact on the society and upsc too much focuses on the globalization okay and now they are moving more specific in asking question regarding the globalization you can understand the pattern by looking at the pyq paper okay so the strategy of india's growth needs to be changed and the focus should be like they should promote the domestic growth domestic production okay because in the context of russia ukraine war or the israel hamas war okay there are lots of sections sanctions that means restrictions is going on put in put it forward by various western nations okay so these are like challenging the supply chain and when we talk about supply chain what does it means like suppose i want to purchase a product from russia okay but the us or the western nation has brought sanctions on russia that if you purchase anything from russia then we will also put sanctions on you as well so what does it means that many country may not be able to purchase from russia okay whether it is the raw material whether it is the export of some products to russia so this will be hampered and these are related to growth okay so if you are not able to export that means your growth rate will get restricted okay so that's why in this article there is a suggestion that we should move from the export led growth story to the domestic manufacturing okay story or the domestic growth drivers and for that what is one important thing we need to understand is like domestic savings will be critical because if you want to investment in the domestic sectors if you want to become atmanirbhar what we need the investment and investment will come from where the savings the household saving because the people in india do have a household savings and these savings is put in the bank in the form of assets which are utilized by the government which are utilized as an investments okay so this will further boost investment in different sectors like bringing the new projects okay or increasing the government's expenditure for capital asset generation all of that okay but when we talk about another context here that the net financial savings of the household in india has fallen to a five decade low of just 5.1% of the gdp in the financial year 2023 which was in financial year 2022 7.2 percent so savings is declining so this is also a critical issue that if savings gets to decline that means the government and the corporate sector will have less fund to get from the household and that will affect the infrastructure development the capital development the promotion of new company or the startups okay so we need to fix that and apart from that we will understand about strategizing enhanced employment why i am talking or why this article is talking about strategizing it because in the coming times there is the coming of technology okay that can replace the humans like chat gpt like artificial intelligence okay and now these are integrated into different sectors as well whether it is in the manufacturing whether it is in the services okay but consider the case of india india has highest one of the highest demographic population or the working age population okay but when it comes to the employment status there is very less employment of these potential working age population so on the one side we have the high number of supply of peoples or potential workers and number two we have the integration of the artificial intelligence technology okay so that can replace the humans as well so mixing these two points what we conclude is like there can be effect on the employability employability of the peoples in india okay so we need like uh, like uh, increasing the allocation of resource for training and uh, skilling so that the potential workers should not get eliminated 
in the name of these digital technology or these innovations okay and when we talk about another issue like what will happen like in the agriculture sector okay so people also do not want to do agriculture so what they are doing like they are shifting their work they are shifting from agriculture to different sector so what we need to create a situation to create a reform so that these people that are changing their agricultural practices so these needs to be absorbed okay in different sector okay so that is another point and when we talk about another issue like in india we are promoting for the environmental benefits we are trying to ensure that our environment needs to be protected okay and for that we have certain targets to reduce the carbon emission okay like cop 26 summit in 2021 india has committed to reduce total carbon emissions by 1 billion tons between 2021 to 2030 and also we have the zero emission target by 2070 that means whatever we will emit in the atmosphere that will be consumed that will be like uh, gets absorbed that means neutrality okay so we are focusing on but for that our companies like the energy sector or the coal based sector okay they also need to shift okay so that means in the coming future the expenditure will be increasing okay because these are new technology and any technological change have the extra cost and this can reduce the potential growth rate as well maybe in the near future okay so these adverse impact can be minimized by emphasizing the service sector growth because in service sector there are less chances that there is a huge dependency on the fossil fuel okay but the manufacturing sector or the agriculture sector has huge impact and dependency okay and has an impact on the environment as well apart from that when we talk about the fiscal responsibility what do you mean by fiscal it simply means the finances okay so remember two things fiscal deficit number one and the debt to gdp ratio so when we talk about fiscal deficit it simply means that government had done expenditure far more than they have the revenue that is the fiscal deficit suppose we have the 10 rupees okay and we have expenditure about 20 rupees so 10 rupees is the net fiscal deficit so also similar in the case of government okay so because of high fiscal deficit or high debt to gdp ratio they also increases burden on the government's revenue and the income because these needs to be paid okay paid in the form of interest rate and you we know that if we take loans for the payment of our back-end loans okay so this will like do not lead to the productive development of the capital of the assets of the infrastructure okay and most of the money will be getting wasted in paying the in, in paying the interest rate okay so that should not be the case we should have a combined fiscal deficit and debt to gdp ratio under the control that is six percent for the fiscal deficit and debt to gdp ratio is about 60 percent okay so in conclusion what can be understood that we need to raise the savings and investment rates okay so this will promote the domestic uh, production this will also boost the atman nirvarta and apart from that the training the skillings needs to be given to the younger working professionals okay and also we need to adopt the mixed technology which are employment friendly okay otherwise the new technology which is coming they can replace the human workforce as well and for india it will not be in the good hand why because we have lots of people they want work but the work availability is not there okay so hope you understood friends and now today we have the end of the session and in the end of the session we have the question for you and try to pause the video and solve and give your answer in the chat box okay 
and uh, thank you friends thank you very much for participating in the discussion we will meet again in the next sort of discussion thank you